Hi, I'm Sam Ben Yaakov. This presentation deals with noise in operational amplifier circuits. Let me first of all define what we mean by electrical noise. Now, if we have an amplifier shown here, and say a microphone is connected to it, and there's some noise introduced due to, say, a uh, bad shielding of the cable, and this noise is sort of coming out at the output. Well, we'll refer to it usually as noise, but this is not an electrical noise. This is just an interference that, of course, disturbs us, but this is not noise. What we mean by noise is that if we have a situation like shown here, we have a signal coming into an amplifier, and then it comes out, this is the original signal, but then added to it is sort of some interference, which is noise. It is generated within the amplifier. This is a inherent electrical noise that we are talking about. Let me first say some words about some algebraic uh, relationship that we are going to use. If we have two voltage sources feeding a resistor, and I'm showing in one ohm resistor because I'm going sort of to normalize all the uh, voltages, all the power to a one ohm resistor. The sum of these two voltages is shown here, assuming a sinusoidal uh, waveform for each. Now the power that will be delivered to the, to the resistor is the sum of these uh, voltages squared over R. Since we are going to use 1 ohm as a sort of normalizing element, I can talk about the power-related voltage square V1 plus V2 squared. Using the values of V1 and V2 from the sinusoidal uh, expression, I can get the power taking this term to the power of 2 squared, then we have the cross term, and then we have the last term squared. Now we define now an expected value of a variable, say y, which will be a function of x, as the average value when you take the integral of the function throughout time, when time goes to infinity, theoretically, and then you divide it by this time. This is sort of the mean value or the expected value uh, of this function. So the expected value or the mean value of E square, volt square, or power related voltage for the two voltages feeding this uh, resistor will be the integral of this expression uh, over time from zero to t when t sort of goes to infinity. Well, let's see what are these terms here. We have a sine square, and the sine square can be expressed as one half, one minus cosine two x. And then the mid term here has a product of two sine uh, functions, and this product is actually one half uh, cosines, the difference, and then the sum of the uh, of the variable. It's important to note that when you take an integral of a sinusoidal or a cosine wave over a long time, like this expression here, uh, you'll get zero. The reason is that the sort of positive areas are canceled out by the negative area, so the sum of all these uh, areas is zero. So when taking the integral of this part, which is a sine square, I have this term here, which is a cosine, and the integral is zero, so I'm left with one half. The same goes for the last term here, and for the cross term, since this is a cosine and a cosine, and the integral is actually zero, so this middle term is actually zero. So I end up for the expected value of the power-related voltage, V square, 
as A1, this is the amplitude over 2, amplitude over 2, and of course the RMS value will be the square root of uh, the square of the voltage, which is this term. So actually you can express the expected value of the voltage square or the power related voltage as the square of RMS plus the square of RMS of the second voltage and therefore the RMS of the total voltage is V1 RMS square plus V2 RMS. What does it mean? It means that you have, if you have a number of voltages, which is summing up, etc., then the RMS value of the total sum of them as related to the power that they will deliver to a, a resistor will be just the sum of VI squared over all the I's. This will be the total power, or actually V squared when fed to one ohm. And of course the RMS is going to be the square root of this thing. So we have now the tools that we can go ahead and deal with the noise uh, in the operational amplifiers. I'll start with characterizing the various types of noises uh, that we recognize. The first one is the thermal noise, also known, of, known as the Nyquist or the Johnson noise. And the reason for this noise is that in a conductor, shown here, we have charge-carrying elements, like electrons, that are agitated due to the thermal effect and therefore, at any given point, you might say that you have sort of a current one direction and then you have a current on the other direction due to the sort of movement of these particles. So if you look at the terminals of this, at the end of this conductor, you are going to see some voltage. As it, turn out, as it turns out, we do have an expression for this uh, thermal noise voltage which is equal to 4 times k. k is the Boltzmann constant, and here it is. T is the temperature in Kelvin degrees. R is resistance in ohms. And B is the bandwidth. It will be in hertz. I'll talk about it a little bit later, how you calculate it and what does it mean. In any rate, this is the value of the voltage square, the expected value, that you'll find at the end of this uh, conductor. Now, as it turns out, the thermal noise is what we call white noise. By white, we mean that the power density of the noise, that is the value of the voltage sw square, at any one frequency, the magnitude is the same, and this goes actually to infinity. So this is a constant V square. Now the noise density, or noise power density, is expressed in terms of V squared, of volt squared over hertz. That is, we look at the narrow window here of one hertz, and this will be the value of the voltage. So, a resistor can be modeled in terms of the noise that it generates as a resistor plus a noise source in series with it. This is not a voltage source, it's a noise source, so characterized by the noise density. This actually represents the equivalent of a noisy resistor. Now, if we have two resistors, which are connected in parallel, the combined model will be a resistor, which is the parallel value of, of these two, plus the noise of this parallel resistor. Of course, if you have two series resistors, then you'll have uh, like the sum of them plus the two 
noise sources for the two of the resistors. Another type of noise is the shot noise. Shot is a name of a scientist who uh, discovered it. It's not has nothing to do with shooting. And uh, it has to do with a DC current flowing through a conductor. Now again, we do have particles which are sort of agitated and moving through the thermal effect. So if you look at a cross section at any given point, you don't see a constant flow of current, but rather you have some particles coming back and forth, etc. So therefore you see a sort of a DC on which there is some noise superimposed. So this is what we call the current noise. It's like a current source which is superimposed on the DC part uh, that is flowing through the conductor. So this is related to a DC current flowing through a conductor. The next type of noise that we recognize or I'll talk about is the 1 over F noise or sometimes called the flicker noise. This noise has kind of a frequency dependent power density and as you can see it goes, of, goes up as the frequency goes down. This is frequency and this function here is like 1 over F to the power of n, n usually is one between one and two. This noise is found in semiconductors primarily, in which you have a crystal structure, and then the uh, carrier, the charge carrier, are passing through it and interacting with the crystal, and as it turns out, this brings about this type of a noise, which the density is going up as uh, the frequency goes down. The last noise I'm going to talk about is the so-called popcorn noise, which is probably a result of the fact that when you have a chip, a silicon chip, and you have some contacts here, and this is sort of passivated, you have some silicon oxide over it, there are some cracks in it, and some current is sort of flowing here between the uh, contact. This brings about sort of a intermediate type of a noise, which is shown here. Well, it's not regular. It could be like this, uh, etc. And the reason why it's called popcorn is when it's introduced into an audio system, you hear something that it resembles the noise of a popcorn uh, popping up in a, uh, a pan. So how do we analyze a circuit that is built around a an operational amplifier. Well, the starting point is to set up a model that takes into account the various noise sources. One of the noise sources is a voltage source, a voltage noise, which is characterized by the power density or the power noise density. And this is an information that is given by the manufacturer of the operation amplifier. Well, if it's not given, then the amplifier is not characterized for noise and you cannot uh, calculate the output noise that it will have. This is actually given by the manufacturer in terms of volt square over hertz or sometimes as volt over square root of an hertz. Again, we're talking about the power density, which means that this is the magnitude per uh, hertz or units of square of an hertz. Similarly, we have the current noise due to the DC current, which is flowing into the input terminal, the bias current in a BJT uh, amplifier. In CMOS, it'll be very, very low because there is very little cu current going into the uh, terminals. And again, it is given as the power density. This time, it's like amp over square root of hertz or sometimes amp square over hertz. So this is, again, an information given in the data sheet of the operational amplifier. So now we have an amplifier 
and we'll start with a case of a unity gain amplifier, like a follower. So what we do is we, first of all, draw a model that contains all the noise sources. We have the voltage source of the amplifier, voltage noise source of the amplifier, the current noise into the positive input terminal, the current noise into the negative input terminal. But let's not forget that the source has an internal resistance, and this resistance has also noise. So these are all the noise sources of this specific amplifier. The amplifier has a certain bandwidth, a certain uh, transfer function. I'm showing here like a one-pole amplifier, which would be very typical. This is the frequency and this is the gain here. And there's a breakpoint here. And as the, say, given noise source is passing through the amplifier, of course, you'll have it following the shape of the gain. That it'll be sort of constant here, and then it'll go down to like minus 20 dB per decade. So in order to analyze the circuit and find out what will be the noise at the output, you do have now to take each one of these sources and see how these signals are passing through the amplifier to the output. The noise is given as a, in terms of a power density, in the case of a white noise, straight line. Let's assume first that all the noise that we are talking about, all the sources, are white noise. That is a constant power density. In order to get the total noise in terms of V square, expected value, or the square root of the expected, which is the RMS value, you have to take the integral of the noise over a certain bandwidth. And again, I'll talk about the question of bandwidth in a little while. And the, of course, the total noise will be sort of to infinity. And as one can understand, this will be infinite large noise, but the point is that we don't have uh, the noise going all the way because the amplifier does not transfer um, signals beyond a given frequency. So the bandwidth is actually limited. The noise is passing through the amplifier as a voltage. That is, you have to multiply the input voltage times the transfer function of the amplifier, not the voltage square, because uh, the amplifier amplifies voltages. So we have to take the power density, which I assume is given, given in volt square over hertz, and take the square root of it to get volts over hertz. And then I multiply it by the transfer function of the amplifier. And then, in order to get the power, the total power, the expected value, I'll take here this square value of this term, and then take the integral over the bandwidth uh, of interest. This will be the expected total power of volt square uh, of the noise at the output. Since we are talking about white noise, this is constant, so I can take it out of the uh, brackets here, and I end up with an integral of this transfer function square of the amplifier, which I assume is a one-pole transfer function with a breakpoint, the bandwidth 3 dB minus 3 dB of F sub 0. Now, this is the expression for the transfer function, we have to raise it to the power of 2, and then to take the integral uh, from 0 to infinity in this case, just to take into account all uh, the frequencies. Now, obviously, the contribution of the very high frequency will be very low because the gain is very low. Now, as it turns out, the integral of this thing from 0 to infinity comes up to be this expression. 
This is the original noise density at the input. This is the gain of the amplifier. This is this constant value at low frequency. This is the breakpoint of the uh, amp transfer function multiplied by pi over 2, which is about 1.5. So this is the total volt square power that we'll find at the output. The square root of it is, of course, the RMS value. This pi over 2 has kind of a special meaning, and we can use it indeed to do calculation in a very easy way. Because what it really says is the following. The transfer function of the amplifier is this blue line. Now, I'm showing it now in a linear scale. Usually, we draw it in a log scale, and this is why this is a straight line. Now, this is now a linear scale. We have to take the integral over the whole range to infinity. Now, this is a tail here. It goes down and down and down. And what this pi over 2 means is that you, we trade this area here with this area here. So rather going and doing this uh, calculation of the integral, we can take the so-called noise bandwidth, which is the original bandwidth times pi over 2. So what, about 1.5. This actually simplifies calculation very much. So this is the noise bandwidth, while the breakpoint, uh, of course, of v, f sub 0 is, is here. So now we come to the actual calculation of the total noise. And let's have a look now how we deal with the current noise. Now for the negative part of the current noise, it sort of feeds into the negative terminal, which is a very low impedance. It's a virtual ground, so the impedance is very low. The current time the impedance is very low, so this is actually can be neglected. So we are left with this current. Now this current of the noise is actually passing here and developing a voltage across RG, which is fed to the amplifier then we see it at the output amplified by the transfer function of the amplifier. So the calculation will go like this. We start with the power density of the current noise, usually given in amps per hertz. The voltage drop is a function of the current. So we take the square root of this, and we get the power density in terms of amp per square root of hertz. This is times Rg is the voltage. And then we multiply it by the transfer function of the amplifier. Then we take this expression to the power of 2 to get the power-related expression. And we take the integral from 0 to infinity. Now, if this is a one-pole transfer function, then we can trade this integral with F0 times pi over 2 and with the remaining uh, components of the original power density, Rg squared, because uh, Rg is here and this is squared, and then the gain squared. So, the total RMS at the output will be the sum of all these square voltages, expected values of all the components. And if I'll take the square root, I'll get the RMS voltage. Now, there are two parameters that are used in connection with a noise. One is the signal to noise ratio. This is a parameter that actually expresses the quality of the signal. It is defined as the nominal output signal. What does it mean? Well, every amplifier is characterized for a certain level of signals. And we 
sort of define what is the nominal input signal. Well, in many audio systems, it'll be like one volt. So this one volt is coming in, this is the nominal value, then, and it is amplified, and we get the nominal output signal. And then, of course, we have the noise here, uh, which is generated by actually the internal elements of resistors, but expressed as the equivalent uh, sources that we discussed. So the ratio between the nominal signal and the total noise is the signal-to-noise ratio. Obviously, you like to have the noise to be very, very, very low, so you like this number to be um, as large as possible. Another parameter is the noise trigger. This is actually a parameter that gives an indication of the quality of the amplifier in terms of noise. It is defined as the total output noise divided by the noise due to RG. Remember that we have an internal resistance to the source feeding the amplifier. This internal resistor has a noise source, and this noise is coming out at the output of the amplifier. So now we take the ratio between the total noise, which is generated by this noise, and then the noise of the amplifier itself, to the noise due to RG only. Now, obviously, if the amplifier will have no noise, then what we'll find here is also only the noise contributed by RG. So the ratio will be 1, so it'll be at 0 dB. So 0 dB, noise figure of 0 dB means that the amplifier has no internal noise whatsoever. If the noise figure will be, say, 20 dB, this means that the noise of the amplifier is 10 times larger than the noise contributed by RG. To calculate the noise figure, what we have to do is to see what is the total noise at the output due to the current noise, the voltage noise of the amplifier, and the contribution of RG itself. So here are the expression for all the noise sources at the output. Uh, I'm assuming here that the bandwidth for each one of the sources is the same. So this is the term which is common to all of them, like here, so it can be divided out. And I'm ending out with this expression, which is the power density of the voltage noise, power density of the current noise times Rg squared, and then the noise of Rg, voltage noise of the Rg, divided by the noise due to Rg itself. If Rg is very small, say uh, approaching zero, this number is very high. If Rg is very high, then because we have here Rg squared, the number again becomes very high. So if you plot the noise figure as a function of RG, you'd find typically a curve like this with a minimum here. So this will be the optimal source resistance that will give you the minimum noise figure, which implies that you'll have less noise at the output. If the actual RG is not equal to the value of this RG optimal, then one way to overcome it and to do the matching in terms of noise is to introduce a transformer such that the reflected value of Rg, which is n squared times Rg, uh, will be equal to this required R optimum. So this will be a way to match a source to an amplifier in terms of uh, noise. Well, if you have a system which is a little bit more complex than the uh, unity gain amplifier that I've shown before, uh, you'll have more resistors. Then, of course, in order to do the analysis, you have to take into account that each one of these resistors have, has a noise source, this and this, 
aside from the actual noise of the amplifier itself and the source. So you have to take each one of these, see how they propagate to the output and then sum all of them in terms of v square. And if you take the square root of this, this will be the VRMS, the expected value of the RMS at the output. As an example, if uh, I look at the contribution of, say, um, the noise source of the amplifier itself, we have a gain of R1 plus R2 divided by R2 because we have these two resistors here. And so this will be like H0 square. And again, this is the a noise bandwidth, and this is the uh, power density at, of, of the source. And similarly for R2 here, this will be like looking from here, like a, this will be like an inverting amplifier. The gain is R1 over R2. And similarly, uh, we can do the calculation for the uh, current noise at the negative input and I'm not going to uh, do this right now. Now if however you do have a um, capacitor like uh, sort of a, uh, shaping the transfer function then of course you have to take into account that each one of the sources may have a different transfer function that is a different cutoff frequency uh, so we have you take you have to take this into account in the calculation. Finally, I like to refer to the problem of colored noise. That is, a noise which is not white, it's not constant. So suppose that after the noise is passing through the amplifier, you get something of this nature in terms of the uh, power density. Now many times. This part here can be neglected, especially if the bandwidth is very large, say, suppose this is, say, 1 megahertz, and this is here, say, uh, 10 hertz. We plot these transfer function in a log scale, but 10 hertz as compared to 1 megahertz is really very, very small portion of the total frequency range. So the contribution of this part can actually be neglected. And you can just say that this is uh, the noise spectra, power spectra that you have to deal with. However, sometimes you can't neglect it. And suppose you have a transfer function that is, this would be the noise density at the output. Well, one way to deal with it is actually to break it into part. You can first of all break it here and say that this is like an amplifier with a one pole here, and this will be the effective bandwidth. And then for this part here, this will be the function, and you have to take the integral of it. And finally, you got the last section, which is just sort of going up as f square, and you have to take the integral of this part two between zero and f three. So by combining these three, you can get the total noise at the output of the amplifier. This brings me to the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found it of interest and you'll find it useful in the future.